the glide. Okay, let's let's face it, bottom line, it's easier than the rotational shot. However, huge however, it's not easier to do. And so many young throwers out there are making this single mistake. No more! And it's just absolutely crushing their glide. Are you making a mistake? Check it out in this video. Everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Today Throws Nation. In today's quick fix YouTube video, what we're gonna talk about is how to get your glide on track super fast. Now, there's a couple of things that I wanna address. I see this most common. The glide is less technically advanced or less technically complicated than the rotational throws. However, even though it's simpler, that means there's less room for forgiveness and it's very difficult to execute at a high level. So one of the things we want to focus on in the glide is what I see with most beginners and even at all levels is that they're too bent over and they don't understand glide alignment. So if I'm throwing in this direction, one of the key things that we're going to do is we can start taller, we can stay down and you're gonna notice when I stay down and I pull in, you're gonna see what's the core thing that most gliders make the mistake of. They don't have the alignment of the drive side hip. Now again, in the throwing chain reaction, we talk about how critical it is to set up our pillar one, our pillar two, and our pillar three, and we teach more of a dynamic rhythmical glide style. However, that being said, we always talk about the three start styles of the glide, and you wanna choose the one that's gonna work the best for you. All three are basically achieving the same objective. Now, the point of today's video is to get kids out of doing stopping this the bend over in the hip back and so as soon as they pull in they're falling back now a super athletic big strong fast athlete could maybe react out of that position and utilize their weight but the majority of young throwers don't have the strength or the speed or the ability to come out of that and so what we want to see is when we get out of this and we get the, the glide aligned up so you see everything coming up onto the toe, so you can see this drive into the throw. So whether you notice that it's Valerie Adams or it's Thomas Machewski, right? He had a very simple style. So you would see how he would start way loaded over and he would pull that kick leg up. And so as he pulls that kick leg up, he's loading the toe of the drive leg so that he could drive, drop, that's our pillar three, extend the kick leg, pushing off the toe, and then finishing that big punch off the heel to create that nice drive line or glide line down into the toe board. So one of the big mistakes that we want to help our young gliders do is that for the most part, starting where your back here is bad. And so one of the key things is bending over too much or starting like this and pulling in so that when, as soon as you pull in, you begin to fall into the throw. That's not the same as what is traditionally called unseating in the throw. Unseating is when you're consciously beginning to move the hips back into the throw. But what you see is when you don't see this proper alignment from this path so that as it comes down the, that we can create our drive and our kick and then pull into the power position, what we have is when we're too bent over and the alignment's off, everything's already done. The glide line's off. This is why you tend to see the hop. So one of the things we want to do is let our throwers know, stop bending at the waist so much and then getting kind of this position. So as soon as they pull in, they're falling. And what you see are young throwers, thrower after thrower, they're sitting up. When you do this and you pull in and you're falling, you notice how I'm, I'm standing up now, I stand up too much. I can't get the drive foot under me in the middle of the circle. So the simple fix here is stop bending over so much. Don't break at the waist. Try to stay a little taller and stay up on the ball of the foot. And you'll notice that if you stay on the ball of the foot, that's automatically gonna create some correction in your glide. Now this is super simple approach, but the key is when that foot, when I'm bent over, this is gonna to lead to a flat foot and then some kids kick up and then when they pull in, again, you can see me starting to fall. So if I'm falling, my reaction is gonna to be to come up. I'm not gonna be able to pull the delivery leg under me and then you see kids kind of coming in this position and that's when you see the cartwheel finish because all a thrower can do is that's about the best they can get out of their glide. So simple tip for today, don't bend over so much. Maintain your line, that's our pillar one. We wanna maintain that setup and that start of the the chain reaction if that's clean the rest of your glide is going to be a super quick fix for you and again one last tip don't 
try bending over so much, try staying even a little taller and staying on the ball of the foot. So when you kick up and you pull in, you'll be here and you'll be able to pull the delivery leg under you. The taller position, there's plenty of guys in history who have had taller glides and thrown very, very far. And the bigger and stronger, more dynamic you get, the more dynamic your glide can get as well. So if you like today's video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any other videos you'd like to see from us, or there's any topics you'd like for us to address, feel free to please put them in the comments and we'll put those together for you in an upcoming YouTube video. Thanks so much. We want you to throw far faster. Check out our mini courses. Links are in the description below. And thank you so much. And we will see you on the next video.